It was a worldwide sensation. In February 1919, Eamon de Valera walked out of Lincoln Jail and into a place in Irish history. He escaped thanks to a specially made key, a key which also secured its own place in the history of the independence struggle, as David McCullough reports. I now introduce our teacher, Mr de Valera. <laughs> In 1959, Fianna Fáil celebrated the 40th anniversary of the first Dáil. The main speaker hadn't been in the Mansion House on the 21st of January 1919 because he was in prison. But Eamon de Valera's time in jail soon came to an end. A little after that, about the, on the 3rd of February, I think, I was able to get away from, from uh, Lincoln Jail. <laughs> It took a large team to spring de Valera with Michael Collins and Harry Boland on the outside and his fellow prisoners helping inside the jail. Attempts to have a key made outside and smuggled in failed, but luckily one of the prisoners, Peter de Lucre, owned an iron foundry and with tools smuggled in from outside was able to make a key, as his granddaughter, Podrigine Nigovlucre, explains. A lot of the prisoners who were in Lincoln were more academics. He was a practical person. Many of them were people much more learned than my grandfather was, but he was the practical person, probably. The escape and de Lucre's part in it is the subject of Peter's Key, a book launched yesterday in Kilkenny. Its author, RTE journalist Declan Dunn, is another de Lucre grandchild. It was very difficult, apart from the fact that he had these rudimentary implements, he also had to work when the warders weren't there and he had a lookout. So there was a lot of pressure in trying to do something quite precise and not knowing if it would finish all of a sudden. And uh, he managed, with all this uh, difficulty, to make the key and craft it. De Valera's escape was an international sensation, although the other prisoners soon followed him out of the gates. Podrigine Nigov Lucre. Uh, now I know my mother always told me the story that Peter de Lucre was told by his wife not to escape because they were due to be released fairly soon and I'm sure she was getting browned off with her six children trying to rear them at home. While the other prisoners were released soon after his escape, de Valera opted to go to America seeking funds and recognition for an Irish Republic. American public opinion was of tremendous importance to us and it was felt that as I was on the run, so to speak, uh, that it would be better for me that I could do better work in the United States where I would be free to move around. The team that sprang Dev didn't stay united. Michael Collins and Harry Boland ended up on opposite sides of the civil war in which both were killed. De Valera and de Lucre survived but became bitter political enemies. Peter was a common and loyal TD and mayor of Kilkenny, while de Valera founded Fianna Fáil and in 1927 entered the Dáil. In Lincoln, de Valera had promised to return the key, a promise de Lucre was determined to see kept. This went on for 10 years by the admission of Peter de, Luc de Lucre's own uh, family. De Lucre wrote abusive letters to de Valeri because he wasn't getting any response. And eventually, when both were TDs in 1929, de Lucre met de Valera in the restaurant and said, I want the key back. And de Valera eventually gave him the key in 1929. The row over the key was a symbol of civil war divisions which haven't entirely died away, as the current Mayor of Kilkenny, Sean O'Horgoyne, recalled at yesterday's book launch. Um, I was walking, as I said this morning, with people of mixed political background, some of whom said that Peter de Lucre deserves to be canonised as a saint for having got those people out of Lincoln Jail, and some who mightn't be of the same political persuasion <laughs> who had a slightly different opinion as to the gift that Peter de Lucre should have got for releasing some of the people involved. But there was a moment of closure in the 1960s when then President de Valera visited Kilkenny. As Declan Dunn explains, the president held in his hand once again the key which had set him free. He had never spoken publicly about whether this key worked and uh, how it worked. And when he was asked, uh, he said it turned like velvet in the lock. 